Happy fun times in Linux with our favorite terminal tips, this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. I had a lot of fun on the last show. Yes, me too. Um, <laughs> and it's good to see you back. I know. Thank uh, you for bringing me back out of the void uh, that is Devnol. We'll get into that later. I didn't like later. it there. It was black. I mean, I shared with everybody how it looked, but seriously, like it kind of stuck. I, I think that you should start doing segments from the Devnol to share with <laughs> us your unique experience there. But it is at another it's time. It's like a black hole. Even if I'm trying to express myself, all they see is darkness. Just like your soul. Remember, it happened at the last episode. I know, that's what I'm talking about. It's as dark as your soul. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to move on. Through. We're actually talking about our fun, happy times in Linux. On this episode, we're getting into our, some of our tips. And I know that last week, we were talking about ways to kill processes. <laughs> kill them dead. Yes. Make kill them dead, Mal. Make them die. Really? Is that? Oh, I guess it is a... Kill them with the sword. <sighs> Indeed, my coat is brown. <laughs> um, so, and many were quick to point out that in addition to the kill all command that we know and love, that there is another, another named pkill. Check this out. This is pretty cool. So, I'll fire up uh, trusty old um, gedit. Everybody loves your boop, wallpaper, boop, boop. by the way. I know, right? I wish that I could uh, put it out there. I've got another version of it that I can put on the web. I'll do that. So, pkill. And then I just, in this case, you know, I know that the title of it is gedit, so it will, in fact, if I think I do that, it'll do it as well, will it? Yes. So it can cool. it'd be a little bit lossy, and the whole idea here is that uh, pkill will look up the signal process based on the name or any other attribute. So, you know, running pkill gedit, obviously, like I just did, will go ahead and do what you expect and kill it. It will figure out its PID or process identifier. Cool. and So it you don't even have to know the PID number. No, and it has more advanced functions too. It has the ability to do pattern matching and check groups and sessions. And so anyway, I just wanted to point it out because it is pretty cool. <laughs> I also wanted to point out that um, that there's another way cool thing that we can do with PS aux, like we did last week with grep to find running processes on your system. Get this. Similar to how we did last time, except with the tech V option in grep, hmm. we can say show me everything that doesn't match something. Oh. So for instance, and, and this brings us to a fun command. I love this command because it's just kind of silly. It's called, who am I? Snubs. And that's what it'll tell you. Actually, if I run who am I, on my machine it says DK. But if we switch over to Shannon's machine. Mine says snubs. Well, there you go. <laughs> As opposed to snurbs, which Snurbs. we'll get to later. Um, so by pairing these two together, though, we can have it actually tell us, you know, with the tag V option, everything that isn't our user. That's cool. Because PS aux is going to show us things from everything. So get this. Okay. If I, for instance, were to use PS aux and then pipe that to grep with tag V, and remember like last time we did this uh, who am I thing? We'd put it in the dollar sign parentheses. So it runs it as a command and, and uses the output. OK, so I get a lot of stuff, right? But it's all stuff that's running as root or UUID oh. or kernops or anything, right? And what's fun about this is taking it a step further, we can actually use the tac tac sort option of, of uh, PS. And in this case, if we sort by uh, equals negative percent CPU, what we'll end up with, whoops, let me try that again. Uh, and the reason why I got too much is because it's sorting it by CPU, but I'm actually only interested in, say, the top 10. So okay. I'm going to do, do a grep, tack M, and say 11, because it actually has a little bit of a header, right? Whoops. Actually, I can put this back here on this line, and it's no sense in grepping it twice. So tack M11. So it's going to give me the first 11 lines, and then that tack V to say everything, whoops, everything that does not equal, and in this case, uh, DK. So, because this is just shorthand for DK, it's just going to give the output of that. What I end up with is a nice little listing of the top 10 processes running on my system that That's are chewing cool. through my resources, which isn't, in my particular case, anything that exciting. It's like X11 and, you know, <laughs> normal stuff, right. uh, Wi-Fi. That's pretty cool. But if you had like some crazy processes running amok and your system's really, if you're on a multi-user system, for yeah. instance, you're like, who is tying up all the resources? It's like that roommate that was using all the bandwidth. Oh, man. But we're not going to name names. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, this 
particular example goes into that command substitution that we've ah, been using. Okay. And uh, that's when you see when we use uh, the output of one command in place of something. So for uh, this particular instance, who am I became DK. Shannon, when she runs who am I, that's going to equal snubs. Yeah. And that's because it's surrounded by a dollar sign in parentheses. There's another way that you may see this actually online uh, in a lot of examples, and that is using the back tick, which on a US keyboard is what you will get when you hit the tilde key, the, the one right above tab, um, if you do it without hitting shift. Oh, the, yeah. the thing is, and, and you know, I should probably also point out that English majors, before you comment, I understand that it is a Grav accent, but. Um, Are you sure it's not Grav A? <sighs> You know what? I'm not <laughs> sure. Maybe it is grave. <laughs> we will find out in the comments. I call it a back tick, personally, or that fun thing you can use in ASCII art, but that's a different story. I call it the little thingy. Sure. So the little thingy, mm -hmm. <laughs> as it turns out, um, it. is shorthand for also doing dollar sign parentheses, but it's deprecated. Okay. So it's like not the best way to do that, but I'm just going to point that out because you will see it in a lot of old commands. I actually can't do it on my system. Really? Yeah. So if I try to Weird. do like, uh, that exact command, but instead of this, who am I here in parentheses, do the back tick. Oh, look at that. Whenever I hit tilde, I get a, I get a console. Check that That's out. That's weird. <laughs> because I'm awesome like that, and I love Quake 3 and its console-like oh. stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a GNOME extension you can get. Uh, you know, there's also one that I like. Mm -hmm. It's called Shopped. At least that's because how like, I say it. You know, <laughs> I knew that you'd love the one that has to do with shopping. Of course. <laughs> well, it doesn't really have to do with shopping. Here, let me run it for you. So it's spelled S-H-O-P-T, so not necessarily shopping. You do that, and then tack S. And I'm going to do CD spell, which is another. You're going to cast spells command. on me? <laughs> so what is, what is shopped doing here? OK, so it's turning things on and off, or AKA it's uh, setting things or unsetting them. So basically, I can turn this, this, this thing off, or I can unset it with, and that would be shopped tech U CD spell. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. OK, so that so one's very, very simple. What, right. what, is, what is CD spell? So CD spell, <laughs> this is pretty cool. If, if it's set, then minor errors in the spelling of a directory component in a CD command will be corrected. So if you spell downloads as outloads, it'll correct that and still put you into downloads. Wait, wait, so it's going to be like lossy and like, yeah. like snobs, you're, when my, in my bash, I try to type the name wrong and it's all like, Darren, you're drunk, go home. Right? right? Yeah. <laughs> See or bad that, command finally. I always get irritated because I, I forget to capitalize things or stuff like that. So with, with this, and then I always, you know, misspell my, my directories. So the error is checked for our transposed characters, a missing character, and if you have too many characters. So if you put two O's in downloads, or three O's, I guess it would be. Uh, if a question is found, then the correct path is printed, and then the command proceeds. So if I write in now cd downloads, loads, it's still going to put me into downloads. Ah, pretty cool, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so there's another one called dir spell, and this one will make Bash attempt to correct the spelling of a directory name. So, for example, if you cd to download instead of downloads, it'll make the best guess for you instead of telling you the directory doesn't exist. Less nice. Yeah, which is a pain in the butt. So the other one that I really like, and this is for capitalization. I'll turn it on. It's shopped tack s no case glob. So I'll just turn that on. So this one is quite possibly going to change your life because you know downloads are supposed to be capitalized all the time. If you're used to case insensitive natures of like DOS, for example, setting no case glob will make CD downloads with the lowercase d still put you into downloads. So it works on all file names and directories. So for example, I'll go into CD downloads with no upper case, and it still puts me into D downloads with the uppercase one. Oh my gosh, you just made so Linux cool. case insensitive. Oh, it's great. <laughs> I know. Well, uh, you know what? When, whenever you're trying to share commands on Twitter and mm -hmm. your phone automatically capitalizes RM Tech RF and makes you look like a dum dum. Oh, right, right. Because that really ticks me off. Because everybody's like, you know, you don't have to capitalize the R and R. That's not actually a command. Yeah, so now I can be Phone like, actually, it still works with no See, case glob, noobs. 
So we're going to have to do a follow-up of this segment now and figure out how to get emoji commands working in Linux, because that's just what we need, obviously. <laughs> yeah, so I, I thought it was pretty cool. And at the same time, if you've been working in Linux for quite some time, this might be kind of annoying to you, as it is for Darren. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, it probably is best to learn the right way. But if you want to be lazy, it's there for you. So there you go. You're welcome. Oh, man. And uh, should, we should probably also point out that if you just do shopped, it gives you all of your oh, yeah, current settings. So. so if you look at either of ours, yeah, you see an entire listing of all of our things that are either turned on oh or Oh my gosh, off. so much fun. You can so change cool. your history edit and verification and Yay. last pipe and so many fun things to, to get into there. And that's a built-in too. So you don't have to download and Super install handy. anything. It's just built into Linux, all which right, is pretty so fantastic. In just a bit, we are going to go into our favorite silly Linux tips because, you know, everybody likes to troll. But first, a word from our sponsor. When you get that great idea, you're going to need yourself a great domain. And if you're like Shannon and I, you'll love using Domain.com because there's nothing simpler. They have an intuitive domain discovery system and an easy checkout process that'll get your website up and online in no time. And they've been supporting Hack5 for years now, so you can show your support back by using their coupon code just for us. It's HAK5 or Hack5. Drop that in at checkout to save yourself an extra 15% off or shoot them a tweet at Domain.com and say, hey, Thanks for supporting Hack5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Oh, hello, hello, my name is Miss Swan. What? I like your hair, it looks so perfect. <laughs> You're doing Miss Swan on the podcast? Yeah. We're going to get so many comments. I tell you for sure for dollar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's a dollar. Okay, thank you. Okay, look, I tell you for sure. For sure. In a museum in Havana, there are two skulls of Christopher Columbus, one when he was a boy and one when he was a man. <laughs> What, mm -hmm. <laughs> what on earth, Shannon? <laughs> I have a cow tag you for shit for a dollar. A cow. Uh, a cow. Uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Watch this. I tell you fortune. Fortune. You will have to pipe to cow. Cow say, there's a phone call for you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> You like my exploit minute? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Here, here. I'll show you something. <laughs> I got pipe it. Okay, cow say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shannon. Um, you've officially broken on the podcast. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> You're just thank yes, you. yes. Totally not being racist, by the way. Just look up like Miss Swan SNL from the 90s because oh, that I thought was hilarious. Was it SNL? That's I thought it was uh, Oh, maybe it was Mad, Mad TV? Mad TV, that's what I thought it was. Anyway. Along with the guy who would jump up and down and be like, I could do anything. No clue. Although no? I will say Mango. <laughs> Mango is my favorite. Thank you so much for your dollar. Yes, of course. You want them? No, uh, actually I do, thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I figure I will be just as silly back to you. Okay. In that, do you like The Matrix? Okay, I love Matrix. <laughs> okay, no, sorry. Then, you're gonna, <laughs> yes. then you're going to need <laughs> C Matrix, which is not supposed to be capitalized. <laughs> Booyah! What? Yes. Uh, you press Q to quit, oh, and that was cool. there you go. If you want to, you can also do Attack S, which will put it into quote unquote screensaver mode, so Ooh. that any key will quit out of it, and it'll okay. look like this. Okay, it looks exactly the same, but I'm pressing any key. Actually, I didn't press the any key. I That's think I hit cool. K. Oh, Man. you know what? I wonder if this one works like most. You're missing the Yeah, key. control and shift, by the way. Whenever anybody tells you press any key, hit control and shift, and then look back at them as a beta tester and be like, your program's broken. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so uh, another fun one <laughs> is <mean>. that we <laughs> can uh, we can uh, do B for bold. So we can put those both together and do TAC BS. Mm -hmm. And oh, now it's in bold. Ooh. But get this, it gets even better because there's a capital C option that lets you do color. And just for you, snobs, magenta. What? Yes. Oh my gosh. I know. That's so pretty. Is your, is your brain not completely blown? That's so amazing. Yes. These are some of our so amazing, amazing Linux tips because we're having fun in the terminal as we wrap up season My side computer 19. doesn't have matrix. Your side computer is running like 
like Ubuntu oh, twelve oh so four or something. No, seriously, do then I try you name to update it and the thing breaks. It's an i three with a fifty four hundred RPM hard drive. I feel like we need like a, a so Sally sad. Southers kind of thing here for for just ten cents a day. You too can help a poor starving podcaster with an i three and a fifty four hundred RPM. No, my hard goal drive. this year is to get a new computer so I can run uh, dual boot Windows and Linux on it because my current my current set is just is not working for mm. me and I need Windows for tech thing. So, <laughs> so somebody's got a scale at Skylake laptop coming in their future. I don't know. What are you? What I are your recommendations? So. You know, it goes both ways. See, now you get to tell us what machine you're rocking that is just owning, right? Speaking of owning, I will. Uh, thank you. It was a lot of fun to meet all of you guys at the Pironage <laughs> premiere, which we haven't gone to yet because we're recording this on Friday. But anyway. <laughs> oh, so before we go, I also want to let you guys know about some really, really super cool, happy, fun things happening. Infosec training. So we got Mubix from Metasploit Minute, Sebastian, who, who is one of the Wi-Fi Pineapple developers, and Darren, who is hosting another pen test with Hack5. The class is March 11th through the 13th. It's very hands-on. It's training, very different from any of the other ones that you might have gone to. So if you're keen on the class, you want to learn more, you can go to pentestwithhack5.com. That's H-A-K-5.com. Seats are very limited. Uh, they're selling pretty quickly, so we're so going to sell out quick. So I hope that early. there are still some when this is uh, airing. But Me too. <laughs> um, if you can't make it to the class, uh, you can also get all of the awesome pen test gear, which is included with it. And you can Yay. get that from our very own hackshop.com, including the new Wi-Fi pineapples, the Nano, the Tetra. We've got the USB rubber ducky and the land turtle and all that other fun gear. And thank you so much for supporting us directly with that. It is. Uh, keeping Hack 5 going. Do we sell coconuts? So. Uh, uh, mm. Oh. X on the coconut A. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you later. I was talking about legitimate coconuts. Oh, no. I don't think we're, uh, I, I don't think Hack 5 is actually registered for any sort of fruit export, although it's not yeah. a fruit. It's very not. complicated. Is it a legume? Leg legume? Legume. It's a legume. If know. you guys have any feedback or you want to tell us how to properly plant, pronounce words like legume. <laughs> <laughs> you can always email us, feedback at hack5.org, and that is also uh, the website, hack5.org, where you will find all of our other shows like Threatwire, Metasploit Minute, Pineapple University, um, I believe Darren's link to the Snubs Report and Darren's yes. blog, so everything is over there. Yes, and if you're digging like what we're doing and you want to just support it uh, really quick and easy, you can just hit like, subscribe, wherever those things are. You can leave a review on iTunes, you can tell your friends. All of that goes a long way, and it's what has been keeping Hack5 going for the last 10 years. 10 years. It's awesome. So thank you for that. You're old. Uh, we will be back actually next week with some more of our favorite Linux yep. stuff as we yeah. wrap up season 19. Then we're going to head wow. into season 20 with drone building. Should be really fun. Are you going to help me build my first drone? I'm going to help you build your first drone that does not require any uh, sort of FAA re um, registration. Yes. Which yeah. should be a lot of fun. Keep it under 250 grams. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Also, leave your comments with your favorite Linux tips. We will do a follow-up to these. A lot of these are based on your wacky ideas. So thank you so much to everybody that's been sending us cool ideas to feedback or in the comments about their favorite terminal, Foo. Um, and we will do a wrap-up. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen. Hello, I'm Shannon Morris. Trust your technolust. <laughs> like, Bye! <laughs> What am I supposed to do to you? Am I supposed to like no. MV, snubs, no. pipe, cow say? That doesn't even work. Nah. What? Oh. <laughs> what did it say? <laughs> I need to alias snubs to something. Oh my gosh. Wait a second. It couldn't find you because I don't have lib subtitles pearl. <laughs> <laughs>